Hey guys, it's Popo. I'm back here with my girl Hattie. And we got all these outlaw goats over here in the brush eating. I just brought them out. I look for Ivan and Miracle to be here shortly. I let Ivan out earlier, but he was on the field when I let these guys out and he saw me bringing them out. Listen, uh, I got a, a good friend, a, a good friend of mine. Uh, we email back and forth just almost daily. And uh, she emailed me this morning. She said, I loved the video you made about Kim and, and Levi. And uh, she said, uh, it just really was sweet. And she said, we all don't know all of your kids that well. And would you do a video on each one of your kids, say a little bit about them, and like introduce their kids, kind of get them all straight. And I said, I, I could do that. I'd be glad to do that. So uh, I think we should do it in order. There was Kim, then there was Lester, and there was Tina, then there was Daniel. And Kim was born in 1967, I think. Yeah, yeah. And Lester was born in <laughs> 70, I believe. I believe. And I could be wrong, could have been 71, but I think it's 70. I, I don't keep up with kids, and I can't remember when Tina was born. Uh, or Daniel. Well, I guess I, I do Daniel, because Daniel was born the same year my grandpa passed away. And uh, I think about the same month. But anyway, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I said I'd be glad to do that. Uh, Lester is uh, a unique guy, and uh, he truly is. He, uh, going back, starting off with his school days, he was a, a, a good student. Uh, did he get in, in trouble? Well, he was mischievous in high school. <laughs> his principal was a friend of mine. We had, in fact, he'd been my principal. My principal, as I was a teacher, but he was over at our, our campus, and then he moved over to the high school campus. And uh, I'll never forget one day he drives up in front of my shop, and it's during a break time, and I'm standing there talking to, I think, another teacher or whatever. And he gets out, and he's shaking his head, and I am not going to use the same words he used. <laughs> that boy, you're, I need you to come over and let's talk to him. I said, what's he done? Well, Lester worked it at Brookshire Brothers, and along with several other kids. And they have these little stick-on tags. They they stick them look like little stick-ons, but they're round. They're yellow. And they put like a price tag or something, you know, a new price or something, you know, some sales stuff or whatever. And I guess he had come to school with a bundle of them. And he said there was yellow stickers on every locker, it seemed like, on every door. They were everywhere. But there were several kids that worked at Brooks Brothers, so nobody could actually say for sure it was Lester, but all of them kind of pointed. <laughs> yeah. And then I think uh, also he had tossed a, a roll of tinfoil, rolled up it like a ball. Not hard, but hit a teacher in the back of the head when she was at the chalkboard. So I had to go over and Lester come in, and he was, Lester's polite. He's not going to do it no more. <laughs> but besides that, it, it was a good time at school. It went on, did well in school and in, in sports. Uh, went off to college. Uh, did well in, in college. And in fact, at one time, I thought he may become a professional student because he kind of, I think went back and forth maybe a little bit on his, what his major may be. In fact, one one year he come home was kind of off season or whatever. One semester they you know out of for the semester whatever, and he went to work as a as a waiter at a real fancy restaurant. And these boys is 
and I, I don't know, I guess they called them waiters. Their tips was, un, was unreal. You know, like people leave a hundred dollar bill laid on, on the plate and, and he was coming home with just chunks of cash. I think he really wasn't for sure if he wanted to go back to school or not. But he finally decided he would. He went on back and he become an awesome teacher. Uh, he went off down to Aldine. Aldine is one heck of a big school district, folks. It's big here in this part of Texas. And become uh, teacher of the year. Took a little old football team that they had. And all the other coaches had done pick the cream of the crop out of it and left Lester what was left. And he become the winning coach. Took those kids and made winners out of it. So yeah, he's very talented in, in, in things. He really is. He has a passion. And when he gets his mind set on something, he just, he don't back up. He just gets going. And then Harvey comes along. And uh, he comes home from Harvey, and I think he found a donkey, I'm a gene, a goat, and I think his pig, Patty. The only thing survived, the only thing left, all you might say, down there and everything been destroyed and he started over and he started i'm a survivor sanctuary for animals like that and animals that had been washed away and and animals throughout the countryside around here that don't have a home not gonna have a home uh they're, they're left to survive or li left to die on their own or whatever people don't want them no more people can't take care of them no more and him and Jamie have built that place up and brought them there and give them a home. Very good. Very good thing to do. And and you guys as supporters have taken care of that for them and helped them. Uh, now he's got his new place up on the Trinity River. I'm told it's a beautiful place. Uh, G went up and had lunch with him the other day. And, and uh, when I get an invitation to eat, especially if they're going to feed me, I'm going. And uh, I'd like to see the place. I think it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a, a place that they'll be there forever and enjoy forever. The sanctuary, it'll be kept going. Uh, the sanctuary here next to me has got beautiful barns. Everything is laid out perfect. And I'm told that the new place is also everything is a lot of thought and a lot of detail went into everything they built up there. So, yeah, I'm proud of Lester, and I love Lester. He, he knows that. We, we sometimes, Lester and I, get crossways. Uh, and I get crossways with each one of my kids. It's nothing new. Uh, they don't have YouTube, so you'd probably know about it. <laughs> They'd probably say, oh, my dad. Oh, my dad this. My dad that. But, uh. Yeah, we get a little crosswaves. This don't mean we, I don't love him. You know, here the other day, just out of the clear blue sky, show what it, how his heart is. He got a good heart. Uh, everybody talking about how dry, and it is dry. You know, we got a couple little showers that green things up. But uh, these guys come out here every day, and they love this. But their protector is a little bit slow getting here today. Anyway, out of the clear blue sky, he gets me a load of hay. I went over and thanked him and offered to pay for it. Oh no, it's just a, it's a, it's a gift. Uh, I got hay ordered. When it gets here and he runs low, he sure come get some of it too. But yeah, uh, I love him. I'm proud of him. He does awesome work. When he builds something, he builds it good. Uh, he don't build it halfway, Heidi, like some people. You know what I'm saying, hey? You don't build stuff halfway like some of us. <laughs> he didn't get his building techniques from me. All right, guys, I'm gonna cut this off. In my next video one day, I guess, uh, the next few days, I'll do one on Tina. Now, me and Tina, we can get crossways all the time. <laughs> all right, I love you guys. Oh, and I gotta, oh yeah, I gotta go back and tell you about his boys. I said I'd do that before I cut this off. Two sons, Ellie and Lex. And y'all y'all have met them both. And if I was going to describe Ellie with one word, one word, 
it would be sweet. Ellie's got a sweet heart. I think his thoughts are sweet. His demeanor is sweet. He, he, he's so he's just sweet to talk to. His soul is sweet. Awesome kid. I shouldn't say kid, a grown man. He's awesome. He just left my house a while ago. I, I, I'd get, he's talking about food. And I said, what all you cook? We was talking about food and stuff. And I said, look, he's trying to cut back on red meats and stuff like that. He's a young man like that because his cholesterol, he said, is way bad. And I said, look, go get you a little old George Foreman grill. I said, they're not too expensive, $35, $40, you know. And I said, you get all sides. You get one just big enough for you and your girlfriend there and and go buy some little pork chops or, you know, boneless chicken or whatever, seize them up. And I said, that little grill, I'll cook them in no time. I mean, you're in no time. And then I said, you make your salad or something, you could probably pull that cholesterol back down some. Don't, you know, stop eating all them on steaks like, like Bennett does. <laughs> Bennett comes to my house with a steak, thick as you are. And fries it. His mama, his mama ain't gonna let him do it. Do it at my house. Uh, anyway, and then there's Lex. Now Lex, and all the kids, all these kids know it. Lex has my heart. Uh, G and I, we babysit Lex every night the first two years of his life, when because Lester and, and uh, yeah, first two days, the days, first two years of his life because they both worked. And a lot of nights because sometimes Lex would pitch a fit in the middle of the night, couldn't go to sleep. They need to sleep. He'd be crying or upset. And they'd call and she'd say, you need to go get Lex. And I'd jump on this old mule. I think the old, the old mule we had, Heidi. Hey, you wasn't here anyway. It was Vider. Vider was here. Me and Vider, my old dog. Jump on this old mule I had. We'd take off down there. In wintertime, we'd carry a blanket. And, and Lester... Maria would bring him out on the porch all wrapped up and we'd put him on a mule and I'd take off with him. Time I got home with him, he'd just be happy little kids here ever seen you lie. But yeah, Lex, Lex is awesome. Both those boys are gonna be great, great in anything they do, I believe. And they don't get that. It don't just come natural. It that's that's put in them to by parents, you know. They both got their dad to look up to and, and to watch what he does and how he does stuff. And who knows, they may watch me now and then. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. Y'all take care. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, before I go, I got to make a little correction. They also have good moms. Their moms, I can't leave their moms out. You know, they got dads, but they got, they got a good dad, but they got good moms. And uh, they got a good Gigi. But I've... I said they're reviewing this thing, and I kept seeing my glasses cockeyed. Well, you know, sometimes my glasses are like that, and I'm going to tell you why. I was sitting there earlier eating lunch, and I look over, and little Coda Bear has my glasses, and she's got them twisted like crazy. I take them away from her and try to straighten them out, but they don't get out too straight, but <laughs> that's just Paw Paw. Well, that coat of bear, it's her fault. Catch you guys later. Y'all take care.